Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so this is going to be very interesting because I think uh, we're back on my YouTube channel and um, you know, when I did the first episode on mutual fund, a lot of people said amazing content. Um, we want more information on this. Then I did another video on ELSS funds. Um, and then thirdly, I think as soon as I did the ELSS fund video, a lot of people said, please explain what index funds are. And I believe there's a lot of confusion with respect to index funds in the market right now. So in this episode, what we're going to cover is we're going to cover what index funds are. Awesome. Okay. So basically what is an index fund? Okay. So let me just share my screen and we shall begin this document quite easily. Okay. So now, first of all, what is an index fund? This is a big question that a lot of people try to understand and whether is it good or bad, right? Now, index fund is basically a mutual fund only. So a lot of people who get confused, whether it's a stock, it's not a stock. It is a mutual fund um, that invests in stock that imitate the stock market. So it is like a proxy. Okay. So if I investing in say for example you know you have heard of nifty and sensex right now obviously i can't go invest in sensex can you go invest in sensex no you can't go invest in the index itself now you'll be like okay shishank but sensex is a bunch of stocks right under sensex there are so many stocks under nifty there's like 50 stocks why not i just go invest in those 50 stocks or why not i just go invest in the sensex itself possible right but imagine going and investing in the top 50 stocks of india with market cap right you need a lot of capital to invest but you'll be like shashank i only have like thousand rupees but i still want to get the benefit of investing in those um, you know 50 stocks as well so that is why for what people did was they said no problem we'll combine those 50 stocks and we will make another thing called index mutual fund which will replicate this index so you don't have to invest in all of that we will do it on your behalf you give us that money the mutual fund says right and then the mutual fund is managed by a mutual fund manager. Okay, there is a manager that manages the mutual fund and he takes that and manages it. Now, there's not much to manage in this fund, but we'll come to what managing is as well. So that is basically what a mutual fund index fund index mutual fund is, right? So basically it replicates a particular index. So an index mutual fund either can replicate NSC Nifty, can in, uh, replicate even the Sensex, can replicate Bank Nifty. They, there's so many things that you can replicate, right? But most importantly, the most what people do is they talk about replicating the nifty and the sensex now the main reason is why index funds right why why should i invest in an index fund now let me tell you uh, something else about index fund now there are two types of funds okay there are two types of funds in the stock market one is known as an actively managed fund okay and the other one is known as passively managed fund now i'll tell you the difference between the two actively managed fund basically means there is a fund manager. He has a team of 15, 20 people under him doing constant research about what stock to pick. Uh, you know, all these research reports that come out and then they tell the fund manager, OK, you need to manage this actively. Right. And active fund manager basically means he might have to rebalance his portfolio every month or maybe every 15 days or maybe every year. I don't know. It depends on the fund manager, but he's actively involved in that constantly removing something, adding something, ensuring that you get the maximum amount of return. The second type of fund is there, which is known as a passively managed fund. Now, passively managed fund, you need fund manager is still there, but the effort of that fund manager, he does not need a big team. Now, imagine, for example, an index fund, right? If I'm investing in Sensex or Nifty, now I don't need to constantly remove stocks and insert stocks again because it is a passively managed fund. It is not an actively managed fund and everything is already there. It no, there's no need of constant change. The thesis of that mutual fund or the ideology or the logic of that mutual fund is I'm just going to replicate the index itself. So you don't need to be an active manager. Now, there's a difference between the two and I'll come to that as well because that is something known as expense ratio. Okay, expense ratio is nothing but the expense that is taken by the mutual fund uh, from you for managing your money as in simple terms, right? Now, actively managed funds. Okay, now think about it from a logical perspective. Actively managed funds will have a bigger team, will have a fund manager, have a bigger team and they will be more expensive for the mutual fund. So if they are more expensive, right they will charge more money obviously the expense ratio will be slightly higher so that if i'm giving them thousand rupees they'll be like cool thousand rupees is fine we will grow your money for you but whenever you want to withdraw your money or exit uh you know we'll take we'll charge a small amount for this as well maybe one percent maybe 0 0.5 percent maybe two percent up to the mutual fund but in passively managed fund the expense ratio is very low and remember this what i'm saying right expense ratio is the most important thing when it comes to mutual fund because the percentage of expense ratio that is there goes away from your return percentage say if you invest 100 rupees and the expense ratio is one percent then rupees one will be deducted throughout the year and 99 rupees will be invested 
that is how you calculate things okay so it is very very important to understand how expense ratio works but first you understood what the difference between actively managed funds are and passively managed funds are so these are the two main difference now how do you choose a good mutual fund okay so let's do that also but first let's see how do mutual funds uh, how do index funds actually work now index fund let's say for example it's tracking an nsc nifty index okay this fund will therefore have 50 stocks in his portfolio in similar proportions as how the nifty 50 is also working now while an actively managed fund endeavors to outperform an underlying benchmark, an index fund passively managed try to match returns often by the underlying index. Now, let me tell you one fundamental difference between an actively managed fund and a passively managed fund. Now, actively managed fund is any fund that sole purpose is to beat the benchmark index. So, for example, if Sensex went up by 20% in a year, the actively managed fund will want to just beat that 20% and get 25% at least. Right. And that is why they take so much time, effort and money to run your entire company. That is uh, run your entire money. Now, in with respect to index fund, there is no goal like this. Right. Goal of index fund is just, you know what, you just have to match the returns of the Sensex and Nifty. I don't want you to beat it. I don't want you to be under it. Just match it as much as possible. So that is the main goal of an index fund. That is why it is passively managed. So come pesa lagta basically at that point. Now main thing you need to understand while investing in an index fund okay this will come to in a in a slightly bit later now let me tell you what uh, what are some of the important things to understand when it comes to investing in a mutual fund okay the first thing that is very important is to understand how am expense ratio and amc works okay now expense ratio is what expense ratio or it's also known as annual fund expenses or annual fund operating expenses is the percentage of assets paid to the fund manager okay fund management actually not manager but fund management which is also known as the asset management company amc right this is a maintenance charge so every year for them to handle your money you have to pay them some amount uh, to the amc itself now obviously me and you want to maximize our return so we will try to find the best over here is going to be you know what we'll try to find the best fund which gives the most amount of return and takes the lowest expense ratio that means we get the maximum amount of profit if you get less returns and also expense ratio is high, then by the end of the day, you don't make much money at all. Now, that is in the actively managed fund. Now, when you look at index funds is what we're talking about right now. Index funds always have a low expense ratio. Now, index funds predominantly has low expense ratio. Why? Because it is a passively managed fund, not an active managed fund. Now, lower expense ratio is fine, but you will not beat the benchmark index. And why do investors try investing in index funds? Because they want that secure, stable lifestyle, right? They don't want to, you know, invest too much or take that exposure. They're like Sensex is growing in the last 10 years. We will invest in the Sensex or Nifty is growing in the last 10 years. Cool. We will invest in the Nifty. That's it. So they're investing in that. So it is a passively managed fund. So they're maximizing returns. They will not beat the benchmark because they're only betting on the benchmark. So they will not ever beat the benchmark. Now, that is one important thing when it comes to choosing an index fund. Expense ratio is the number one key. Okay. Now, second, there is something known as tracking error. Okay, very interesting. There is something known as tracking error. Now, the tracking error, I'll tell you what it is, right? It's basically the discrepancy in actual performance between a position, okay, and the related benchmark index is known as a tracking error. So, basically, the sense uh, if you're investing in an index, right, and it's going like this, it's say up by 10%. But our benchmark index, the main Sensex is maybe up by 12% or maybe 11%. It won't be that kind of a big difference. It's a small difference. But tracking error is something that happens, right? Now, the tracking error can be used to determine how actively a fund is managed and the risk level associated with that. Now, you need to look into who's managing the fund and what their past performance has been to get some insight into it. Because, you know, sometimes it happens where some stocks go inside Sensex and get out of Sensex. Some stocks go inside Nifty, get out of Nifty. All that happens once in a while, right? So this is what, um, what do you call that? This is what uh, mutual fund on index works. See this. Expense ratio is a small percentage of total assets of the fund charged by the fund house towards the fund management services. One of the biggest USP of an index fund is the low expense ratio. So the reason why people invest in index fund because it has the lowest expense ratio in the market, right? Compared to any other fund. Since the fund is passively managed, there is no need to create an investment strategy or research or find stocks for investing. Janjat nahi hai. You just like, okay, main aap band karke invest karne aalo. I don't want too much nonsense. Let me just invest in this, right? This fund, this brings the fund management cost down leading to lower expense ratio. So it is great for us. Okay. Understood. I hope you have understood till now. Okay. This, this is very in, in, interesting and, in, you know, important to understand. Now, 
let me tell you what are the key things to look at when you're investing in a uh, index fund like the key parameters we understood what are the features you need to look at you need to look at low tracking error and you need to look at low expense ratio low expense ratio almost everyone has but the lowest is better for you if the tracking rate is good as well so that is very important now let me tell you some parameters to look at when you invest in an index fund okay now the first thing you need to look at when you're investing in an index fund is the risk ratio okay how much risk do i have the first thing how much risk and how much return can i get Number one, right? Now, why is risk and return important? Because if I'm investing in an index fund and you'll be like, Shashank, index is basically the sensex and the nifty going up. I'm like, yes, correct. You're right. But would you not want to know what is the entire risk that you might be taking at that point? Now, if you look at the risk and return ratio, if sensex goes up by 10% or 12% or 15%, your risk is slightly less. Okay. Your reward is the same as the benchmark, but your risk is slightly less. It is less volatile because your entire volatility depends on the Sensex and the Nifty or whatever the index you're tracking are, right? You're not playing on stocks now. You're playing on the entire index. So your volatility up and down reduces a lot. Okay. So that is why it is good. Now, if the market is rallying, market is rallying, matlab bull run, what we're seeing right now, during a market rally, index funds returns are usually good. What we're seeing right now are good returns because the market is rallying, but if you think about index funds with respect to market not being good, right, then the market will only go up by 7, 8, 9, 10%. So your index funds will give you 7, 8, 9, 10% on a yearly basis. Depending on how Sensex is growing or how Nifty is growing or how the index is growing, you will make money from that perspective. Understood? Awesome. Now, there's always a chance that the market can go low and investors can lose their money. So please be aware of that as well. Now, that is one key important parameter to look at when you invest. Now, the second thing is uh, investment horizon. Okay, now you'll be like, Shashan, how many years should I invest, right? This is very important. How many years should I invest, especially in an index fund? This was also said by, I think, Warren Buffet in one of his interviews, where for people who don't like doing research, so a lot of people uh, don't have the time to sit and do research about stocks, number one, right? Then a lot of people are like, who will keep tracking them every single time, every three months, every three quarter, I mean, every quarter I have to go track the index fund or I have to just go track these stocks and figure out whether it's good or bad. Kiske past time, I don't have that kind of a time, right? So they're like, okay, I don't understand this. There are also some type of people like you might know very well, including I was one of these people where, you know, you're investing in the market every day. You'll open your app and look at, oh my God, I made 2% today. Oh my God, I made 3% loss today. And immediately when you see a big loss, you'll be like, sell, 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 sell. You start doing panic sell, right? But if you zoom out of this picture and you see from a long-term perspective, it is always going upwards. Right. So for all the people who don't have that patience, who don't have the time to do research and who don't want to understand how the stock market works, index funds is the best thing for you to do. Why? Because I can just invest in an index fund and forget about it. So usually if you're investing in an index fund, if you look at Sensex, it was at 2000 at one point. Now it is at 50,000. People are predicting that it will reach 1 lakh, 1 lakh 50,000 in the future. So if you're saying, you know what, Shashank, I don't care in the future, whenever it makes money, it makes money. So from a time investment horizon perspective, longer the time you keep your index fund the beneficial it is for you got it awesome now this again as i said it is basically used for long-term investment perspective awesome i hope this much is clear and you guys understood a lot from this perspective of what index funds are why do people invest in index funds who are the people who invest in index funds because i don't want to do so much manner than janjar so that's when you invest in the index fund now let's look into some index funds in general right so almost all index funds have very close returns. Not much difference since all of them are basically tracking one and the same thing, right? Now the first insight is the ones with low tracking errors usually give better returns, right? If you look at this website where I've linked, I'll put all the links below, but this is tracking error and you can calculate how the tracking error works as well, right? So this is something that you need to keep track of. Now basically a fund that matches the index more closely will obviously give you better and higher returns. Now. If tracking error is high, then again, returns will be lower, correct? The other thing that matters is the expense ratio. Very, very important expense ratio. I'll put this link for you guys to have a read and educate yourself. Now, lower the expense ratio, more of your money gets invested. Now, the overall industry can't have more than 1% expense ratio for index funds. As the industry on an average is like close to 0.2% expense ratio. And you can look at it into all the index funds on the Grow website itself. They're all pretty much the same. Now, do let me know which one as per your research has a low tracking error and low expense ratio. I want to know about that in the comments below. Now, all this is about what index funds are and how we look at index funds in general, which is two main things, which is one is the tracking error and one is the expense ratio. 
But now what I want to bring to your attention or I want to actually uh, talk about is a new index fund that's going on in the market. Uh, and it's a new NFO actually that's coming out in the market and it actually closes in a few days. So I'm going to show you what that is. This is something that I came to know very recently from someone and this is known as a Navi Nifty 50 index fund. Okay, Nifty 50. So that's the higher return part. And this is currently going on, I think. I think July 3rd was when they launched and I think they close on 12th. So pretty much at the end of their NFO itself, right? Now, why I'm doing, why I keep looking at all this is because you need to keep finding more funds. So you should keep looking at what's happening. Now, let's look at what Navi 50 is, right? Now, let me look at this. Okay, so this is Navi Nifty, Navi AMC, right? Navi 50, 50 index fund, direct plan growth, NFO, which is new thing. It's it's like an IPO, but an NFO. NAV is starting at 10 rupees. So if you want to invest today, it'll be at 10 rupees NAV. The minimum amount, I think, is what? 500 rupees, okay? The minimum amount is 500 rupees for the first investment. And then you can keep doing that same thing. Uh, you can either do an SIP or one time. That is completely up to you. And there is the scheme. This is run by a guy called Girish Raj. Mr. Raj has done his MMS, BSC, uh, and also there's a lot of different and funds that he's managing under Navi as well. Okay. Now, the important question is not that, right? The important question is, you might be asking me, Shashan, what is this Navi? Who's Navi, right? Who's Navi Mutual Fund? And I've never heard of this company. It's not like HDFC or ICSI or, you know, Tata. I want to know what Navi is. And I don't know whether you guys know this, but a very few people know this. But let me tell you that Navi is actually a company by uh, Sachin Bansal. Okay, I'll tell you who Sachin Bansal is. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys know who Sachin Bansal is. Okay, sorry, sorry, there's some glitch in that. Okay, so this is Navi.com. It was basically founded in 2018, again, by Sachin Bansal. Um, and they ventured into digital lending, right? And they also have this wholly owned subsidiary, NBFC subsidiary called Navi FinServe. And they have also become one of the largest lending apps in the country after that, right? Now, Navi after that also ventured into microfinancing, also known as MFI. And they have this MFI NBFC known as Chaitanya India or Creds, the Crids as you know, he had recently acquired a company called Crids. Immediately after that, Navi also launched uh, insurance sector. They came in the insurance space where they launched general insurance and other health insurances as well. And I will show that to you now. Wait one second. I'll show it to you next. Navi insurance is something that is very famous in the market um, where, where you have simple insurance that insurances that you can buy. But main important thing is Navi Mutual Fund is sponsored by Sachin Bansal, who is actually the former founder and the CEO of Flipkart. So you remember, I don't know whether you guys saw this in the news some time ago. Uh, basically, if you want to understand backing, Sachin Bansal, Navi is something that is very famous and synonymous with everything. So let me just Google and show you, right? Uh, so Navi was a company that Sachin Bansal took over. Okay, once he got the exit from Flipkart, he actually bought it. And he entered the financial services space. He said, I'm going to enter the financial tech space. Uh, okay, see, there's some news here. Okay, yeah. See, this is the news, I think. Yeah. So this is what I read on Mint as well. So Navi is Navi is actually an insurance company, but he went through the insurance route, but he's now investing and get not investing, but getting into the financial game. Sachin Bansal, after insurance, acquired SL Mutual Fund and became a sponsor of the Navi Mutual Fund. Sachin Bansal, oh, this was on 14th May, one month ago. Sachin Bansal owned Navi Mutual Fund is all set to launch its first few mutual fund schemes in the next few months. And they're also launching, launching a lot of passive funds. Now, one Im interesting thing to understand here, right? Remember, I spoke to you about expense ratio. Uh, this is basically their website, I think. Yeah, Navi Mutual Fund uh, Index Fund. Now, if you look at this, it starts on July 3rd, ends on 12th July. So that is going on right now. So you can still invest in that. It's a new index fund that's coming. It's a passive fund. Um, if you look at the performance, you'll come to know about the performance very soon. Benefits. Okay. Yeah. So this is something that I heard, right? From people. Just look at this, guys. You can see my screen, no? Yeah. Awesome. Navi Mutual Fund's proposed expense ratio for their index fund is 0.06% for their direct plan. Now, as I mentioned in the past, right, the industry average is at 0.2% and here Navi is saying they're starting with 0.06%. Now, they can increase their expense ratio over time, but still there's a huge difference here. And I think they're going the Vanguard route, which is basically the biggest index fund in the USA and also the world. They do something very similar. Their entire USP is low cost. And I think Navi Mutual Fund is trying to go to the same route, right? Okay. Again, you can invest with 500 rupees, which is the SIP amount, which is fine. But the only difference, two differences are that one, it is run by Sachin Bansal's, uh, I mean, it's, it's the backing of Sachin Bansal and he's the main head about it. It's run by obviously a fund manager named Girish Raj. 
but the main and most important thing is the expense ratio because we only look at percentage return winning at the end of the day so this is coming now it's not even done yet it, i think it's going to go on till 12 july so if you want to invest you can invest from here as well now another thing you can look at is the scheme information document okay sid oh i have to come here again okay yeah see this scheme information document please read the offer document carefully before investing see again first thing that they show all the investors is the risk is very high okay uh name of the mutual fund is navi mutual fund formerly known as sl mutual fund navi acquired sl and then sachin bansal became its sponsor now here this is like an ipo document that you can read and go through by yourself which talks about the summary of the scheme the risk factors if involved any risk factor information about the scheme units and fund offering about the scheme ongoing offer details uh fees and expenses which is 0.06 so you can look at everything in this document right you can just go scroll down and look at all the parameters that are there to invest in this particular nfo now again my job is to just show you different things and how you can do your research rest is up to you to invest in whatever you want right but this is basically how you look at different kind of index funds okay so wait i'm just going to pause here for a bit now uh, i'm just seeing if i missed out anything all that is fine cool now who i hope that was interesting i hope that was very interesting now i hope you guys firstly understood what index funds are how we came across index funds what are the key things to look at which is tracking error and mainly more than tracking error because everything adjusts over time the most important thing about a mutual fund or an index fund is the expense ratio so wo ek pakad ke rakho ki expense ratio lowest hai to kya what what should i do right now why do people invest now final let's come to the conclusion right why do people invest in index funds okay the main reason why people invest in index fund is one you are investing in your mutual fund you are investing in your equities but you want some stable source of income now over a longer term equities will definitely give you better returns than say fd or bonds but the risk is slightly higher than that but it's obviously lower than picking individual stocks so you can actually assign a certain percentage of your investment towards index funds and over a long period of time you will actually face little less volatility and this is the entire analysis of index funds why people invest how to look at an invest in index fund what are the parameters to look at in an index fund uh, what is an active fund versus passive fund and i think at the end you finally realized basically how important it is to understand how index funds work so all the people asking me those questions saying sir what is index fund how the taxes work with ltcg and stcg so be careful when you're investing and removing money so as long as you invest in index funds keep it for as long period as possible okay now finally let me give a disclaimer uh because it's a mutual fund uh, thing so i will give a mutual fund disclaimer saying oh, i'm first of all not a sebi registered advisor uh so i do not recommend any buy or sell or anything and second mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully that was fun <laughs> okay awesome so i hope this episode helped i hope you guys could watch it it's slightly longer almost 30 minutes but you can watch it in a faster speed i tried explaining it faster as well uh but again if you like it more videos coming up soon on this channel okay see you guys bye signing out shashank kudupa bye